Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of That Pop Culture Show, where we explore everything and anything pop culture. We're your hosts. I'm Cody Frederick. I'm Jason DeBoard. Let's get poppin'. On this week's Pop Profile, we have with us legendary Academy Award winning icon, Miss Margaret O'Brien. Wow. Well, it's wonderful to be here. Well, and thank you so much. Welcome to both of you. I know. <laughs> My goodness. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for taking the time to yeah. come in and chat with us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a controversial question right off the top here. What was it like to upstage Judy Garland? Oh, I don't think I upstage <laughs> Judy Garland. Nobody can upstage Judy uh. Garland. But uh, we worked together like serious actresses. She treated yeah. me like a serious actress, but also she was fun to be around too. Yeah. And when we had a break, she would jump rope with me and Aww. we'd play a game called Jacks. I yeah. don't think they have that game anymore, but it was a fun game. So I had my <laughs> childlike interaction with her, but also when it came to doing a scene, we worked together as serious actresses trying to steal each other's scene, oh, of course. Cool. So you, oh, it, was, awesome. it, was a, it was a great partnership in that yes. she elevated your ability and you mm -hmm. elevated hers. Well, that was the fun of working as an right. actress. I love working with uh, people that treated me as an adult actress. Yeah, right. yeah. I did, and she did, but she was always very concerned also about my welfare. Oh. And my mother and she got along very well, too. Oh, oh, wonderful. And, of course, it was a very happy time for Judy because she was having a romance with Vincent Minnelli. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it was Mimi in St. Louis that uh, really gave us Liza Minnelli. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Just to kind of preface it for those that may not know, you were a, uh, you started acting in 1941? And I'm not going to say what year. Well, so <laughs> but you can I tell didn't say it either. Everybody we'll bleep that knows. Out. Everybody knows. I can't lie anymore. <laughs> you know. But um, I started when I was four and a half. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But my mother was a famous dancer. You know? oh. She was a famous Spanish dancer with the Casinos, oh, really? Rita Hayworth and her father and mother. And my aunt was a famous dancer with Xavier Cougar's wow. orchestra. So when I came to MGM, and this is a funny story. When I did Jane Eyre mm -hmm. with Orson Welles, he was married to Rita Hayworth at the time, and Rita and my mother danced together before I was born. Oh, wow. And I'm one of the few people that have an autographed picture from Rita when she was Rita Consino <laughs> saying, I love dancing with the Flores sisters. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she didn't know no. that I was... Margaret O'Brien connection right. with the mother that she danced with. Right. Wow. So that was quite a surprise when we went to dinner <laughs> at their house. Right, right, right. So you never know what's going to happen in Hollywood. It's right. a small world. <laughs> so growing up in that industry at such a young age, obviously you were kind of born into entertainment. I was because yeah. my mother was dancing yeah. at the time. So uh, when my aunt was at the Waldorf, with Xavier Cougar's orchestra, my mother would sneak me into the hotel because they ha would have a, a little hotel room for the performers. Yeah. And I was so tiny, I haven't grown too much, <laughs> but um, a little bit, but I was tiny enough to sleep in the drawer. Oh, so oh my, my mother gosh. made a little bed for me in the drawer. Wow. <laughs> and then those days they would have a lady who would check um, all of the floors, sure. sort of like the head lady. She knew I was there. Yeah. So she would, you know, look into and sit there when my mother was performing. So I did. I really grew up in show business. Right. Yes. And, and, and what, was the, what was the big break? I mean, aside from... Well, you I know. really uh, almost didn't get started because my mother was concentrating on my aunt's career because oh. it was really going as a dancer. Yeah. She was doing all the famous hotels, yeah. the Fontainebleau in Miami. In fact, I would be there when the owner, and then he had this little son, and then the son became the owner. 
Uh, and we wow. played together yeah. as children oh, wow. there. So my mother was concentrating on her career, and they were having some pictures taken at a very famous photographer's studio, um, and his name was Paul Hesse. Oh, wow. And in fact, the studio is still there on Sunset, has wow. never changed. <laughs> wow. Everything has been rebuilt except this one <laughs> studio. And um, so they were having pictures taken. Yeah. And my mother didn't have a babysitter for me, mm -hmm. so she brought me along and our little dog. Um, and the dog at the time, because my name originally was Angela, mm -hmm. but my little dog's name was Maggie. <laughs> oh, wow. So this gets a little tricky, <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> tricky, you know, time. But anyway, um, I was Angela X at the time, and my mother brought the little dog. Mm -hmm. And when they walked in, the photographer said, that's the face I'm looking for. Oh, wow. What a great face. Well, my mother thought it was her, and my aunt <laughs> thought it was her. It was the dog. <laughs> so he said, do you mind if I take... I'm doing a cover for Saturday Evening Post, yeah, and they wanted wow. a dog. Right, and right. my little dog was very well behaved, because <laughs> she grew up, you know, in show business, right, that's too, right. yes. and had to behave at the hotels. Yes. So... My mother said, yes, well, if you want to photograph the dog, you know, do we get a discount on our pictures? And then he said, well, the baby's kind of cute, too. Uh, do you mind if we, I put the baby in with the dog? Well, it made the cover. Oh, and then wow. after that, for s about two or three years, we were the models for Paul Hesse. Wow. We did all these magazine covers. And when the studio was casting Journey for Margaret, yeah. they were calling children out from all over the world right and um they called me out mm -hmm. and i happened to get the part and wow. from then on that's that's how you know, that's i was how put played. under contract so how much do you remember of performing in that i remember role? everything you do wow i can tell you what somebody wore on the set wow I can tell you what the school teacher wore because <laughs> i have a photographic memory oh wow. and i can remember Wow, and nobody can ever tell me a fib because I don't know what they said <laughs> Busted. a while back and they've forgotten. Yes. Right. I mean, that probably helped you remember lines, huh? Yeah. It did. It didn't take me long for lines right. wow. at all, no. So, so then you, 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 you started off as a child actress and then you continued to proceed in your career and you ended up, uh, and we, we'll get more into this later, but you ended up winning an Oscar. Yes, uh, that was for me being in St. Louis. Growing up as a child star in that era, how did it work? They, you, you, you were about to say that they put you under contract. They did, after Journey for Margaret. So mm. like, what does that mean? So you're, you're locked in to a certain number of pictures? Uh, you like, are. Yeah. The studio creates the movies for mm -hmm. you. Yes. You have a seven-year contract. Wow. And you are locked into the studio. Now, at that time... They didn't pay you hardly anything, right? you know, but my mother, um, she was wonderful. Yeah. She walked into Mr. Mayor's office and said, <laughs> I want $5,000 a week was the highest salary everybody got. Clark Gable, yeah. you know, Lana Turner. And um, I was just getting ready to do Meet Me in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, well, unless we have that, uh, She's not going to do the picture. And he started crying. <laughs> Mr. Mayor could cry better than we could when you asked him for money. Right. <laughs> so he's going, oh, I can't. You don't know my expenses. Uh. And my mother said, that's, oh, and you'll go on suspension. My mother said, oh, that's fine. I'll go back to dancing. And I love New York. So mm. we're off to New York. Living with my mother was sort of like living with Auntie Mae. Right. right. You know, <laughs> she'd take me all these unusual places. Right. So we did. We left. And they had a little girl that they called my look-alike. In those <laughs> days, they would have a look-alike Clark Gable. Oh, James wow. Craig was the look-alike Clark Gable. So if you got too prissy or huffy, <laughs> they'd say they're going to put this person in wow. your place. Of course, they never did. Right. So they had told this little girl and her family that she was going to be a Meet Me in St. Louis. And they costumed her and everything. Never always knowing they were going to find us. Because they'd put too much into making Margaret O'Brien at right, that right, time. Right. And I'd had my name changed because I loved the part 
of Journey for Margaret. Right, right. So I made my mother take me down and have it legally changed oh, wow. to Margaret. Oh, very and nice. what age were you at that time? Then I was like going on five. Oh so you had gosh. all this life experience. <laughs> so I had all wow. this experience. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they came up with a salary and I came back. And then they had to tell this little girl that they were not going to, which really was oh, heartbreaking yeah. right. for the family. And her father really had a nervous breakdown oh, over wow. it. Wow. And um, that was not a nice thing they did right. sure. in those days. Yeah. But, you know. Things happen. It's a serious business. Right. But uh, I did do Meet Me in St. Louis. Yeah. And, of course, that even. Yeah. That, that and I got my $5,000. <laughs> 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 right. Wow. So at, at that time period, once you do a film for them, what was marketing like for you? Did, did they, like, from what, I, from what I've read, it's, it, it's very much like you're almost taken out and shown around to the world. Is that kind of what it was like? Yeah, you, you, you could not do a picture for another studio right. unless they lent you, sure. okay. which they mm -hmm. did for Jane Eyre right. at Fox. Mm -hmm. The only time they ever did that. Mm -hmm. But my mother was very clever. <laughs> they didn't do a lot of um, oh, dresses yeah. and jewelry and Margaret O'Brien clothes and, and in those days, product, which mm -hmm. they do today. Right. But my mother did that separately. Oh, wow. And I uh, wow. created the Margaret O'Brien dresses, wow. Margaret O'Brien hats, gloves. Wow. Um, and the studio didn't get that. Wow. They were wow. really mad, but yeah. they couldn't because it wasn't a movie and it wasn't at the studio. Right. We did it as a separate product. Oh, wow. And, um, and I made still, as much money name, doing right? the products as I did at the studio. <laughs> wow. That's so, fascinating. Yes. Uh, I did all of those, and they were very, very popular, and also records. Yeah. Um, Margaret O'Brien records. Like you would uh, sing on them? No, they were more like fairy tales. Oh, okay. And then one, because I am part Latin, mm -hmm. um, one called Flying Down to Mexico, where I play the little Mexican girl and the little American girl. And oh, the two languages. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And that was for Capitol Records. Right. Wow. I had a contract with. So I had two separate contracts, as though it, just so it wasn't for a movie. Right, right. But then uh, the studio uh, did have something to do with the radio shows, because I did a lot of radio. Right, right, right. And I still do. Yeah. I still do. Uh, some of the recreations oh, really? of the radio shows, and it's very, very famous. They have an audience, mm -hmm. and I do it in Seattle once a year. Oh, wow. And with some great actors. Yeah. Um, Tommy Cook. Uh -huh. um, we did, a, we did a, a show together called The, the, the Beetle and Mr. Bottle, <laughs> where I played a very not bad lady, a very <laughs> bad lady, <laughs> looking for their... Different husbands, yeah. so I could get their money, and I love the script. <laughs> so wow. they do a whole. They recreate all. They recreate the Lux Radio wow. Theater. Wow. They create the suspense. Mm -hmm. I did one called Suspense. They recreated that. So would they do the sound effects in the room? They do sound effects, and they play it um, nationwide for one night. Oh, oh wow. So it's live. And then they have an audience, and it's live. Oh, Just wow. like it was wow. in right. those days. So it's wonderful because it's a little bit different yeah. acting yeah. medium. Yeah. Because wow. you have to know the sound effects. You have to know when the director's going to come in. Yeah, it's with, a lot of time. Now they're going to have the steps. Now they're right. going to have the gunshot, you know. <laughs> so wow. it's a lot of fun, and I love it. Wow. And so I do that once a year, too. Plus, I did several movies before the pandemic with my wonderful friend randall malone <laughs> who's also my manager oh fantastic and so we'll, we did uh, two movies as a matter of fact uh we did one that's uh, called beverly hills christmas okay that won a couple of, uh, of awards oh fantastic yeah and, and what I, I imagine it's a christmas movie it's a christmas movie about a family and and everybody gathering and getting together for Christmas. Sure. And then the other one was called Love and Bel Air, mm. uh, that I'm head of the family and the, the, 
lady is looking for love in Bel Air. You know? <laughs> you're looking for love? No, she's looking for <laughs> oh, love. Oh, well, I think that's more interesting, though, if you're out there looking for love. You know? No, I wasn't. I didn't get to do that. My son was looking for love. Oh, okay, fair enough. So I was trying to set him up. Right, you know? right, right. You had, all, you had all the lines. And that was with Joey Lawrence. He was on that television oh, series. Oh, that's great. And he was the, um, my son, who I was trying to set up with. A love affair. Oh, fantastic. So, how was it like working with Joey Lawrence? Very nice. Whoa. Wonderful. That's all I know. Like, I, 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 that whoa is Joey no, Lawrence uh, from Blossom. Uh, no, no, we've, we got along well. Oh, well, great. That's fantastic. I pretty much always, with everybody I worked with, um, was wonderful to me, except for Wallace Berry. Wallace Berry. When we did Bad Baskin. Oh, wow. And he was very difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. You're going to have those people periodically, right? Yeah. Well, I could go through several stories <laughs> while Wallace Berry, but I won't do that. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to throw the dirt on He did guys. not like children at all. Oh. Yeah. So that that's makes it bad. tough. It, it was. So it sounds like you are a work horse. Well, I love to work. I love my time, too. Sure. To myself. Sure. But I also love to work, too. And, of course, I love to travel. Oh, you do? As I said, living with my mother was like living with Auntie Mame. When we were at the studio, yeah. the studio had, oh, Mr. Mayor cried at this one. Because <laughs> yeah. when I had a break, my mother said, we're going to the Casbah in Morocco. We're going to the Casbah. And he said, you can't go to the Casbah. All the criminals <laughs> live in the Casbah. And my mother said, oh, we'll be fine. Because her favorite movie was with Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar <laughs> called Algiers. Oh. So she wanted to see it, and we did. Wow. We went into the Casbah, and we had a great time. That's fantastic. So your mom was like a really sophisticated business oh, person. Oh, she was, yes. Where did, where did that come from? Well, she was part gypsy. She was a Spanish dancer. Mm -hmm. And she, when I was a baby, we were in Cuba. When I was about a year or two years old, my mother danced in Cuba. Wow. And do you know that I can still remember, nobody will believe this, <laughs> going into the ladies' room, and there was this beautiful girl with a gardenia in her hair. Uh -huh. And I can still remember wow. what she looked like. Wow. So I wish I had a memory that good. I think the earliest memory I have is... Uh, a bear coming into my campground and eating something. It's not as pretty as what you just described. Oh, we had a bear coming in in Wyoming when I did Bad Baskin oh, did you with really? Wallace Berry. Oh, really? Yes, You hoped did. it ate Wallace Berry. <laughs> it would never... He'd, he'd eat the bear. <laughs> so. Or he'd taste so bad the bear would spit it out. They wouldn't oh, want to know. Wow, okay. Well, that's fantastic. Margaret, you've lived this like... Super so it was a lot of life. adventures beside just being at the studio. And of course, my mother loved New York, yes. and she was a restaurant person. So I grew up at 21, the store club, <laughs> and she'd take me everywhere with her. Wow. Chasen's, wow. the Copa, all of these. <laughs> so I was like seven or eight, and I loved it. It wasn't for every child, sure. right. but it but it was, it was great for me. Yes. You know, yeah. Because my mother gave me a choice. She said, well, do you want me to have, you know, somebody come in and take you to the movie or right. a nanny come over for the night? And I say, oh, no, I want to go. I want to go, too. <laughs> so she would take me. And she was sort of like a suffragette yeah. for that time because right. women didn't go by themselves Not at all. to the restaurants. And they certainly didn't take a little girl. No. But I was Margaret O'Brien at the time, and they treated us wonderful. <laughs> we'd go in, we knew all the owners of the restaurant, and we'd sit and have a wonderful evening. Oh, wow. And my mother was very pretty, so. That didn't hurt. <laughs> Some of them did like my mother. <laughs> 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 Including Mr. Mayor. Including, uh, oh, really? So she got by with a little more than. <laughs> well, that and she. But all she gave him was a handshake. That <laughs> was it. That was, <laughs> that was it. It made him cry a lot. It made him cry a lot. <laughs> that's right, that's right. But he loved the dark-haired exotic. You know, he loved uh, Hedy Lamar and mm. all of that look. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I have to ask, are you wearing Joseph of Hollywood jewelry? Am I what? Wearing Joseph of Hollywood jewelry? Uh, no, I'm not. They look, they look like... I, I will say the name I'm wearing. Yeah. She's a very famous designer, That's Heidi beautiful. Dawes. 
Oh. Heidi Dawes. You've probably heard of her. She has jewelry all over. Oh, wow. And I am wearing her jewelry. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, it's very Thank beautiful. Thank you. Fantastic. I love jewelry, too. Yeah. So. Was it harder to break the child role as you got older and you were, you were acting? No, because I was very lucky. That's when television was starting to do all these wonderful shows. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when the contracts ended at MGM, mm -hmm. and they pretty much ended for everybody, they wanted people to stay at a lesser salary, but my mother said, no, that's going to end. So I started in television. So I did Playhouse 90. Right. I did all of these. I got to work with people that I never got to work with at the studio. Uh, right. Jack Lemmon. Yeah. Right. We did Playhouse 90. Tony Randall. Wow. All these wonderful actors and wonderful new and up and coming directors, which was wonderful uh, for your career and for sure. your acting and uh, transcending into all these different adult roles I'm because right. it was people looking at me differently right. than they would have at the studio. Right, right. And looking at little Margaret O'Brien. Right. They were looking at me as a different person. So was Playhouse 90, was it mostly people coming from the stage, kind of transitioning From stage, in? Okay. and then also, my mother was very clever. I also did a lot of stage work. Yes. I took over for Sandy Dennis in her show. Oh, wow. Um, and then I, I did um, one for Claire Booth Luce mm. called Child of the Morning on Broadway. That closed, but I did get good reviews in that. And then Barefoot in the Park, I was with for like three years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, with, I did it with Ann Southern. Mm -hmm. I did it with Pat Carroll. I did it with wonderful Virginia Mayo. We, we did the tour, the wow. National Company. Doing, oh, wow. And also it was done here in Hollywood mm -hmm. by a wonderful producer who had never produced anything. He got the rights to do it here. Mm -hmm. Um, named Ronald Shusette, mm. and he even did our footprints in front of the theater that we did here, and we were uh, about two years here in Hollywood with Barefoot in the Park, Wow! and uh, then he went on to do Alien. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes, he produced Alien, then. and they cannot remove those footprints <laughs> as hard as they try, because I have the other footprint, but they said, well, you know, we don't need... They can't take them off. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> They're there in the cement. <laughs> and Rod Amato directed, mm -hmm. wonderful director. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite between film, television, stage, radio? Do you have a favorite? I loved it all, acting? really. Yeah. yeah. I loved doing radio, too. Yeah. yeah. And in those days, I memorized all my radio. Oh, wow. Because I wasn't good with reading the script. Oh, it sort of takes you out of it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I would memorize the shows, and then I would have a lady sit down, and I could read her lips if I looked like I was getting a little bit hesitant. Uh -oh. And the only time I wanted to read so badly <laughs> like the other people read, and I did a show with Jimmy Durante. Oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. And Well, we did a movie together, too. Oh, okay. And then I was doing his show, and I picked up the script, mm -hmm. and I dropped it. <laughs> Luckily... The lady was still sitting there, <laughs> and by the time I could read her lips, I got back into kind of, I half right. memorized. Gotcha. Rhythm of so from then yeah. on, they wouldn't let me read <laughs> on radio. I do now. Right. I do now, right, right, of course, right, right, but right. I didn't then. So it was all different. Each one was different, and each one was wonderful, and I was so glad that I, you know, and I love doing television, too. Right. I worked with Rod Taylor. Yeah. He was so handsome, I thought, <laughs> you know. We did two television shows together. Mm -hmm. And also um, uh, Jeff Hunter. Mm -hmm. He gave me my first kiss on television. <laughs> so that was kind was that, of exciting. Did you guys practice that, or was that just like, oh, let's do this? <laughs> no, we practiced we it a little. We can't tell. <laughs> he was really good looking, I thought. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And then, of course, um, the one I kind of had a crush on uh, when I did the show with Rod Taylor, mm -hmm. was Henry Silva, but he had a girlfriend. <laughs> they so. always do. They, they always, always do. do. I know, I know, unfortunately. Crazy. Anyway, I had a little little flirtation, Babe. but not anything mm -hmm. too much. Margaret, you're a human being. Don't you <laughs> dare think for a minute having a flirtation is wrong. Not that you did. <laughs> 
Each week we ask the question, do you want to touch it? Well, this week, sweat, excitement, fear, yet <laughs> excitement some more. Yeah. Margaret, we've got none other than what here? Who's that of little course. guy? Oh, well, this is the Oscar. <laughs> and this is um, a special Oscar. When they found it, they asked me if I wanted to have the larger one. Right. And I said, no, because this one is really an antique. Right. There's only so many of these. So to kind of reiterate on the story, this was, so how, so what happened? You received this well, when, and then what happened after? What happened was, um, I received the Oscar, Bob Hope presented it to oh, me. Oh, wow. Naturally. And of course, at that time, I was more excited about seeing him, because yes. I loved his movies, <laughs> yes. than getting the Oscar, Oh wow! <laughs> to be truthful. <laughs> but um, we brought it home, and we had a very nice housekeeper, and my mother s thought, oh, it could be polished up a little bit, so she gave it to her to polish, and somehow something happened where it never came back, but wow. she didn't steal it or anything. It was up in her attic for all of these years, for like 25 years, wow. 30 years, wow. for longer than that. And um, when she passed away, her children didn't know it was real. Right. They sold it to this little vendor that goes to the Rose Bowl all the time. Oh, wow. And of course, in recent years, they have the reproductions. Mm -hmm. So everybody thought it was a reproduction. And he was selling it for like $20. Wow. So these auctioneers kept going back and they said, no, this is different because the base cannot be duplicated. Right. This was a one and only mm -hmm. yeah. way they did it. So they bought it and then they had it up for auction for like a lot of money. I can imagine. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, wow. yeah, sure. And that's when the Academy was looking for the, uh, these Oscars, and they had a rule that you could not sell them. Right, right. It just stays in the family right. or goes back to the academy. Right. So they found it, and they said, you can't sell this. So, of course, they were not happy people. Right. <laughs> but I'm one of the few actresses that was presented with the same Academy Award twice <laughs> in a ceremony. So wow. they gave me... Well, a smaller ceremony at sure, the Academy. Sure. But they gave me a ceremony. And uh, so I've had two wow. ceremonies for one wow. Oscar. That's wow. really cool. And this is for... Uh, that, so the, and it's smaller it's because it's... It's been through a lot. Yes, I can imagine. It was through a lot. And they had sort of a dent in its head. Because <laughs> when I did a show for Oprah, she was doing a show about lost treasures. Oh. Yes. And my manager, Randy, was with me. <laughs> And he's handing it to Opa, and they dropped it. Oh, no. So it got a little dent in its head. So it's been through a lot. Yeah, but if anybody's going to dent something you own, it's got to be Opa, yeah. right? So, and I'll always know where this Oscar is, because it's the only one with a dent in its head. Yeah. He has a history. So it does have a history. It'll never get lost again. Right. So this particular type of Oscar, they'd hand out to juveniles. Well, it was for a special... Juvenile Oscar for a performance, okay. yes. I, Shirley Temple had one, Judy Garland. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, uh, of course, those were not able. In those days, years ago, you could sell it. Right. But as the years pass, they put a rule that you cannot. Right, right, right. Because there were too many reproductions sure. coming out, and they did not want that. Right. You know, they had, the real Oscar had to stay either in the family or at the Academy. Right. Yeah. Wow. So. Well, that's an incredible story. I'm very happy that it came back to you. Well, right? I never thought it would, so you never give up. <laughs> you never know when so was there a lost any treasure point, will come back. Was there any point when you were younger where you're like, Ma, where's that, uh, no. where's that Oscar I won? <laughs> Do you remember? No. No, it wasn't anything. My no. mother was, but not yeah. me. No, you were just like, yeah, whatever. No. Yeah, right. No. I, I, I saw Bob Hope. I'm good. It's like it naturally has a magnetism. <laughs> That's drawn back to you. Yeah. It does. And for your body of work and, yeah. you know, what you achieve. So it does mean a lot now. Yeah. Right. And, right. Uh, but as a child, it was more right. seeing Bob home.
we also have this. Well, I'm very rock and roll yes, tonight. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But this jacket is yes. so fabulous. Yes. I've always wanted one. Michael Bush, who did all of the clothes for Michael Jackson. Yeah. And those gorgeous jackets. And I got his book at Julian's auction. Oh, wow. And during the pandemic, that kept me busy. I kept looking <laughs> at this book and seeing all these gorgeous jackets. And I thought, oh, I'll never be able to get one. He will <laughs> never sell those bees. He will never get. So the other night, he presented me with the jacket. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. So I love this jacket and all the bees and everything. And I never thought I'd get one. Right. And well, I, he does such incredible work. Yeah, it's so distinctive. The, the work his style. is just incredible. And I think he's retired now, so he's not going to be, you know, doing a lot of. Could you imagine doing this beating? <laughs> and I said, this jacket has to weigh five pounds. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it, it is just gorgeous. So I thought I'd spruce up since we're all <laughs> out and enjoying yeah. our lives again. You are And it makes me feel very perky. Oh, it, yes. as it should. It's like flames are coming out of your chest. You're, you're, you're rising up at a, out of a crimson flame and exactly. you're ready to attack. I thought after being in for a year, I have to really rise up yeah. and be as perky as possible. Yes. And this is uh, something that makes me feel good and perky. So in Mimi in St. Louis, you had, uh, you were wearing a red jacket? Yes. Um, everybody knows the red coat. Yes. From the crying scene and the snowman scene. Yes, yes. And Judy coming over and saying, we'll come back to St. Louis someday. <laughs> right. you know? And um, Everybody's that was the St. one Louis scene now. I had a hard time crying. Oh. Because Judy and I were kind of laughing. And, you know, I was, usually I could cry very, not in real life, but for the film. And I was having a hard time. And Vincent Minnelli did write down in his book that they had told me that my dog was missing, that somebody had sold my dog. My mother would never have allowed that, or wow. Judy. Right. That was Jackie Cooper. Oh, interesting. Uh, Wallace Berry told him that, so he would cry <laughs> in the movie. Right. Wow. But what really got me to cry was my mother came over and she said, um, why don't I have the makeup man put false tears on? But as, as you know, you and June Allison are in competition for the best criers on the lot. <laughs> and June is such a great, great actress. Uh, <laughs> she would be really crying. Wow. And then I started to cry. Yeah, I can imagine. Because I wasn't going to let June win the trophy and right. be ahead of me. Wow. So that's how I cried in that scene, with the red coat. With the red coat. Wow. Well, that was the only thing that my mother bought because you were not allowed to keep your costumes. Right. But my mother asked Mr. Mayor yes. if she could buy, of course he made her buy it, yeah. buy the coat uh, for me, because she thought I could wear that at different appearances. Mm, sure. So we bought the red coat, and I had it for years, and I wore it. And then as I grew older, I thought, well, I don't want the red coat. And Michael Jackson, that was one of his favorite movies, he wanted to buy the red coat. And I said, well, I have a charity. If you'll give the money to my charity, I have a dog charity and, you know, different charities. Um, so he bought the red coat. And then when he passed away, my dear friends, Julian Auctions, <laughs> uh, bought the red coat. So I went to their party where they were showing all the beautiful clothes sure. and the red coat and everything. So, and they already had a bid on the red coat. Yeah. Um, I saw the red coat <laughs> hanging on one of their mannequins. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, I think I can get into that red coat. <laughs> now, that was when I was seven. And this was only like three years ago, <laughs> right, four right. years ago. Yeah. And I put on the red coat and it fit. Wow. Except it was short. Right. <laughs> it was long, you know, then. But it was like to my knee. Yeah. But it fit me perfect. <laughs> and then I said... I want to have my red coat again. I can wear it. <laughs> and Julian said, we love you, Margaret, but we already have a bid. And, you know, <laughs> it's already sold. <laughs> Just like the dress I saw today. Just I like always Nicki Minaj's dress. <laughs> so um, so uh, it was sold to somebody. Wow. But, um, but I could wear it. It was amazing. Wow. Hmm. And I can still put my same hands in the handprints at the Grommans, wow. and they fit. Wow. So seven-year-old you, you didn't grow Seven-year-old seven? hands, <laughs> yes. And my feet 
pretty much too. Wow. <laughs> My feet are a little bigger, but the yeah. hands fit perfectly. Oh, That's wow. Amazing. So, wow. I didn't wow. grow that much. <laughs> Margaret, thank you so much yeah, for taking you. the time to share your stories. And Well, it's wonderful talking with both of you. I've heard so many nice things Aww. about both of you. Well, we <laughs> hope we, uh, we fulfilled those, uh, those expectations. You did. <laughs> thank you. And I was absolutely looking forward to doing the interview. Well, we appreciate so, it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. You are um, most welcome. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of That Pop Culture Show. Join us next week when Jason and I bring together a new pop culture icon, one never ever experienced or known by any <laughs> living being. Meta, imagine. Keep on talking. Here with you, isn't that so?